In the season finale of Star Trek Picard, we get our first real look at the next generation of Starfleet ships. It's the USS Zhenghe and a bunch of other ships that look exactly like it. Though that's not entirely true, and we'll get into that in this video. We'll also go over all the behind the scenes stuff that went into designing the ship, what exactly a Zhenghe is, then take a better look at the finished design since we didn't get a chance to see all that much of it in the show, and finally a look at its interior and the bizarre CG edition. So let's get going. This is the USS Zhenghe. Before we get into a detailed look at the ship, let's set the stage. It's the season finale of Star Trek Picard. He's in this thing, facing down a bunch of Romulans who are all in the same type of ship, except for this one. And they're also all facing the same direction. It would make sense to surround your enemy, but maybe they didn't take the time to plan things out. The writers sure didn't. Data's daughter Soji shoots a blue space beam into the sky, though it's red when it reaches space, and it opens up a portal to let a giant robot space octopus through. The Romulans are about to open fire on the space portal, which actually makes perfect sense when, just in the nick of time, an armada of Starfleet ships arrive on the scene. They're also all facing the same direction, like some sort of 17th century battlefield strategy. Acting Captain Riker opens a signal and identifies himself as commanding- wait, wrong clip, that's Commander Riker acting. Acting Captain Riker identifies himself as commanding the USS Zheng He. Acting Captain Will Riker in command of the USS Zheng He. And there won't be any shooting down of apocalyptic space portals today, because he has the toughest, fastest ship that Starfleet ever put into service, and he's got a whole fleet of them at his back. He also says that starting a war and killing a bunch of people would make him happy. Nothing would make me happier than you giving me an excuse to kick your treacherous Talsiar ass. You know, all Star Trek-like. Maybe if we felt any loss, as keenly as we felt the death of one close to us. Human history would be a lot less bloody. Both sides gear up for combat, and someone should really take a look at this broken impulse engine. Picard intervenes though, and gets Soji to pound her fists, which shuts down the space laser. Both sides stand down. The Romulans leave, Picard and Riker share a couple words before all the ships conveniently leave, because this whole scene was just plugged in at the last minute, and the fleet wasn't there when they filmed the rest of the episode. Then Picard dies, these actors try to one-up each other with their crying skills, and that's how the ship debuts on the show. So let's dive into the process of designing this ship. Even though the Picard series wasn't set aboard a Starfleet vessel, the art department still wanted a conventional Starfleet designed ship on hand. There were plans for one to briefly appear in the background of one of the episodes from the middle of the season. John Eves, who's been on Star Trek art teams for decades, being the chief designer for a number of high profile ships, has also worked on the show during the Kurtzman era. He had a Starship concept sketch from when he worked on a Star Trek game back in 2006. The concept never made it to the game, so he threw it out there for consideration as this new background ship. They went with it, and it would be referred to as the Big Cargo Bay ship. Though plans for this ship to appear on screen were scrapped, and there were no other plans for a new Starfleet ship to appear on screen at any point for the rest of the season. Work on the season wrapped, and Eves returned to his home in Utah. Later he received an urgent phone call asking him to get his concept sketches, put the name Zhang He on it, and send it over to them within an hour. Eves drew up three versions and sent them over. From there, the VFX team chose one and hastily threw together a model. And that's what we got in the show. As covered in numerous other videos on this channel, creating a new Starship design with little time isn't anything new. But this one is especially rushed, especially for a ship that's featured so prominently. If you're into the video so far, it'd be great if you could hit that subscribe button. You can always unsubscribe later, but in the short term, it would help this video get seen. Shut the Okay, fair enough. Now let's take a look at these three versions. This is concept one. The most striking feature are these cutouts in the saucer, similar to the USS Discovery. I've never understood the benefit of removing valuable interior space if the trade-off is having window views of other windows. At the bridge, sweeping back is this dark chevron shape, similar to what Eves designed on the Enterprise E. In all of this, it's worth keeping in mind that this ship is supposed to be a successor to the Enterprise E. Also like the Enterprise E, the secondary hull smoothly slopes back from the saucer into this shuttle bay in the aft. Moving to the nacelles, they're nearly identical to the Enterprise E's in design, and also extend pretty far back. Next up is Concept 2. This is the one they went with, 
Up front, there's a cutout for wide shuttle bay doors. Inside is a massive bay where they could keep things like shuttles or oddly shaped containers or chickens. They call these shuttlecocks. This design with having a notch in the front of the saucer looks like a nod to the Akira and NX classes, which had similar cutouts in their saucers. The pylons angle more forward than the ones on Concept 1, and the nacelles are proportionally shorter. This concept also has impulse exhausts, positioned much farther inwards than what's usually seen on Star Trek ships. Overall, not much change from this concept to the final design. Finally, we have Concept 3, which is a blend of the other two concepts. It has a smooth, uninterrupted saucer like Concept 1 without the gap, but also has the inset impulse exhaust like Concept 2. The pylons are basically the same as Concept 2 as well. The name Zhang He was chosen ahead of time by producers. It branches out from the usual Star Trek convention of naming ships after things from Western culture. Zhang He was a 13th century Chinese mariner who commanded voyages to Southeast Asia, India, and Africa. On one of these voyages, he brought back a giraffe, which everyone thought was some dragon-horse hybrid creature. Sucks for the draft, but good for him. 600 years later, he'd get a fictional spaceship named after him. Acting Captain Will Riker in command of the USS Zheng He. By the time of Star Trek Picard, without the Klingons, Romulans, Dominion, and Borg as threats, it looks like Starfleet has really stopped caring. The VFX team decided to give the ship this splotchy hull surface. Makes it look like the pig pen of starships. There's also several points on the ship with these exhaust grills. The saucer is unevenly lined with what looks like large windows. Given how they're lit with this plain white light, the rooms inside must look like this. Like mentioned earlier, this is supposed to be Starfleet's latest and greatest. Right now I'm on the bridge of the toughest, fastest, most powerful ship Starfleet has ever put into service. Given the ships that we've seen on Discovery, which in some cases are 150 years older than the Zheng He, the Picard art department really failed at making this ship look any more advanced than the ones we've seen on Discovery. It's possible they just stopped watching Discovery. Maybe they're watching iCarly instead. All of these unnamed ships are virtually identical. And this one is actually unnamed. This is where the name should be. The only noticeable difference between these ships are the nacelles. Some have the angled Enterprise E styled nacelles and others have these rounded nacelles with bizarre collectors on the top and bottom. So you can't say they just copy pasted the same ship over and over. They actually copy pasted two ships over and over and over and over. Here we get a better look at the ventral side of the ship. This is best seen on the official model. Where the deflector dish traditionally is, there's another bay door. This gives the ship three bays, one in the front, another in the back, and this massive one underneath. The official Star Trek Starships collection lists the ship at 631 meters long. Here's a scale comparison comparing it with other ships. So turning our attention back to the ventral bay doors, it's as wide as the OG Enterprise. And the Enterprise E is just barely wider. Just above the bay doors, there are five lights. Given the size of these bay doors, I don't know why they'd even need to be lit. But nonetheless, there are five lights. The bridge is the only location that we see, and it's a redress of the USS Discovery's bridge. They don't even try to update the view screen design. Behind Riker, you see consoles with two layers of screens. There's a column in the middle with a thin light on top and rounded lights leading outwards. That's this area of Discovery's bridge. Here you have the consoles with two layers of displays, the column in between, the thin light on top, and lights leading outwards. They just put a cover on these lights for the Zheng He. The captain's chair is exactly the same too. The armrests are identical. From the back, you can also confirm that they're the same chair. Only the Zheng He adds these stripes. In fact, they added these stripes in post-production. That should give you a good idea of the rush they were in to film these scenes, and also trying to visually differentiate this ship from Discovery. Someone in VFX was like, hey, you know what this chair needs? Cup holders. But maybe it's too complicated, so eh, whatever. Stripes. Anyway, since this is the USS Discovery's bridge, that also means they have to have
So that's the Zheng He. If you liked the video, or maybe you're a longtime viewer who never got around to it, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it and it'd help the channel more than you think. I'd like to thank these shuttlecocks for their generosity. I've got another video about halfway done on something that's not a starship. If this is your first time on the channel, there's plenty more videos like this. Either way, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next- Shut the f